I'm Pastor Mark, Senior Pastor at Mount Taylor United Methodist Church. And we welcome you to this special celebration of Palm Sunday. That's our live celebration of Palm Sunday. Now, this service was pre recorded prior to the uh, stay at home order becoming effective. And we thank you for joining us in this act of celebration of worship. We hope that you're healthy. We hope that you're safe. In managing the restrictions and maintaining the spirit of faith. Hope and patience. Please know that our thoughts and prayers are extended to you. Uh, we miss not being able to worship publicly with you. Uh, this is hard for all of us. We encourage you to stay connected. Uh, please send us your prayer requests. We have the means to distribute those prayer requests among our staff and our prayer teams, and we will, we will just keep prayer regularly. Please take advantage of our church website for devotions that have been recorded by our staff, as well as other prayers and other resources uh, that you may take advantage of during this time. Uh, on this day, we remember Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Our message today is the faith of Jesus, and the scripture comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20. Let's worship God. Today is Palm Sunday. The crowds cheered and shouted, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They waved palm branches and spread their garments out in the road as Jesus entered Jerusalem. But the cheers were shallow and the celebration was short lived. Today, the king rode into the capital in the lowly cult. Today, he received a royal reception. Today, the tears briefly held back the beauties of suffering and death. Today, all the purple candles on the living room are extinguished, and only the Christ candle candles will be seen. Our opening hymn is All Glory, Loud and Holy. Thank you. 
As we go into our time of prayer, we'll have a few moments for silent prayer. After which, I will share a prayer written specifically for Palm Sunday by Debbie Meeker. And we can follow that. Let's go to God. Thank you for sending your spirit and paving the way for our lives to be set for Jesus is set for the cross. Thank you for what this day stands for. The beginning of Holy Week, the start of the journey towards the power of the cross, the victory of the resurrection, and the rich truth that Jesus is a good day for our community. Hosanna, blessed is he in the name of God. We give you praise and honor for your ways are righteous and true. We give you worship for you are good and just. We will declare that your love stands for for your loving promise to do this. Thank you that your ways are far greater than our ways. Your thoughts are to be Thank you that you have a plan to redeem. 
thank you that you make all things. Thank you that your faith is to work for us. And you hear our prayers and you know our prayers. Help us to stay strong and true to you. Help us not to fall in the face of the battle, but to press in closer, to hear your whispers and seek after you. We pray that we bless you. Thank you that you raised the prayer. And that you are more than confident in the mighty name of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord, thy kingdom, our will, 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 Lead us not to but to give us the For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. We come to our time of offering, and while we will not be passing the basket, we do appeal to you financially support your church now more than ever. While we will not be passing the basket, there are still bills to be paid and the needs of the ministry that we support that we face. While we will not be passing the basket, we are blessed to be a blessing. So we share a portion of our blessings to help spread the message of Jesus and seek to be generous and faithful sharing the good news of the gospel to our community and community. While we will not be passing the best, we do ask you to consider giving online via our website or through the church by app if you have it. While we will not be passing the best, the faithful service and personal service are still at their place in the envelope of the stand or do it. Thank you for your support. Please pray from wherever you are that we will be good stewards of the resources that support the body. Amen. Our next hymn is Rejoice, Be Pure. Hear the prayer of illumination. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Fill our minds with your peace and our hearts with your love. The scripture verses from the first 11 verses of the 21st chapter of Matthew's Gospel. 
As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethphage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. So into the village of Bethphage, he said, As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its bolt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say, The Lord needs them, and you will immediately let them take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, Tell the people of the case, when look, your king is coming to you, he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's head. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw their garments over the colt and he was found. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. Blessings are the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this man? And the crowd replied, The prophet from now death. The word of God for the people of God. Yes. Imagine with me that we were there when I mean, all this took place. We're in Jerusalem. We hear some commotion. People start stirring toward it. A certain location, close one of the gates. We, out of curiosity, decide to follow and see what the, the commotion is all about. As we get to the gate, we look outward and we see this man, here, here, riding on the back of a donkey, approaching the city gate. He's followed by a ragtag group of men, a small group of men, maybe six or twelve. As he gets to the path just leading up to the gate, people began to cut palm branches. They, they began to wave. They take their coats off and they, they lay them down on the road. Actually, all of this was, was described many years before it happened by one of the psalmists in Psalm 118. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, which, through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answer me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the path. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O oh Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For the house of the Lord we bless. Him. The Lord is God. He has made his life shine upon us. With bows in hand, we, we join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God. And I will give you thanks. You are my God. And I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Those words written in the holy book and the, the, the Psalms, we have given us a little bit of understanding of, of, of what was going on behind this event. Can you picture Jesus for a moment with me? We don't have any accurate pictures of what uh, Jesus really would have looked like. There are no accurate, ac- accurate renderings, no real physical rendering of Jesus' face. All the pictures that we have of Jesus through the years have been created by artists painting from the 16th century onward. But Jesus did have a face. And his face tells us some very important things about him. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he fell on his face and began to pray. Judas planted a kiss. 
some of the crowd calling for his crucifixion, and, and some of the some of the soldiers who were standing there while he was being inter- interrogated. Back. In the Old Testament, a prophecy in Isaiah concerning the suffering servant, which was a reference to Jesus, mentions his tongue, his ears, and his offering his cheek to those who pulled out Isaiah 6, verses 6 and 7. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheek to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking pity, because the sovereign Lord helped me. There have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put. Can you see him? Can you see him? Can you see his face? What do you see? When I see the face of Jesus, I see the look of joy. I see a sunny face. As he pronounced blessings in the Beatitudes, in those eight Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. He goes on to our list of eight different experiences of life that you and I have. And he goes on to say how each of them are blessed. I just see joy. In the prayer that he prayed on behalf of his disciples, on behalf of all of us gathered, as he was gathered in the upper room, he said to his father, I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy. His face. Full of joy because there was joy within him. But his face was also a picture of life. We remember those words of Jesus I have come that you might have life, you might have it abundantly, you might have it in fullness. People were always asking Jesus questions. And many of those questions had to do with things about life, particularly eternal life. One young aristocrat forgot his superior social standing and the staring eyes of the crowd. And he ran up to Jesus and he knelt down before him and he said, Teacher, what must, what good thing must I do to you? The crowd had dwindled. The throng suddenly seemed uninterested. Jesus looked at his disciples standing there. They were, they were the only ones left among the crowd. And he, he said to them, You do not want to leave me too, do you? Simon Peter, yes, he the one who was never afraid to speak his thoughts, speak what was on his mind. Lord, to whom shall we go? If you have the word, for we take the life. It must have also been a compassionate face. As we look at the face of Jesus, I see joy, I see life, but I also see the look at kindness and compassion. It must have been a face that somehow knew how to grip the hearts of people. It was a face that drew outcasts, the people who were isolated and lonely. It was a face that drew little children. A face that attracted children so that they were just as willing to receive hugs from him as they were hugs from their own parents. It was a face that was gentle, a face that loved and who suffered. But there's another book of Jesus' face that I, I think that we would all find there. That is the look of dead passion, the look of determination, a look that, that says, I must do my father's will. It was a book Luke tells us in, in the ninth chapter of his gospel, when the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. Other translations say he resolutely set out. Jesus knew what was said. He knew the plan. He and his father had been working together on this plan for that for, throughout all the centuries of time. 
though it was going to be a very painful end of his, his mortal life, he turned his face towards the east. He looked at the combination steadfast, obedient, and a resolution to obey his way for the Lord. And what a welcome he received when he arrived at the gate of Jerusalem. The crowd received him as a king. They spread their coats in front of him. They waved the palm branches. A very, loud, a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him followed, that followed shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna. The word literally means save us. Save us, King Jesus. Deliver us, King Jesus. Save us now. Maybe that's appropriate for us Save us. Save our world. Save us from a pandemic. Save us from a, a little virus that's spreading fear and, and closing down the world. Save us. Save us from giving in to fear and anxiety. Save us from thinking only about ourselves. Save us from greed and self self preoccupation. Save us from self this idea that we can do it all. Save us from our weaknesses. Save us from our tendency to throw in the towel and give up too quickly, as many of the crowd did after they sang Hosanna, the sound of Hosanna, on that first Palm Sunday. And by the end of the week, they shouted, Crucify. Crucify. Jesus made his way to Jerusalem. Riding donkey. If a king were riding into the city, particularly into Jerusalem, the capital, during the time of war, he would have ridden on the back of a horse. A stallion. But in times of peace, he would ride back of the back. Jesus in Jerusalem. On that first palm, riding on the back of a donkey. A time of peace. I bring a kingdom of peace. We will come to bring peace to you. Ahead of him was the cross. The cross was the most terrible form of death there was, or ever has been. An extremely excruciating, painful way to die. First, there was the first one. He was stirred and whipped. Last forty times, but each blow of the of the whip drawing more blood. Then there was the long parade to the hill called Golgotha, which means place of war. Jesus bore the heavy cross as long as he could stand it. As long as he could physically stand it, stand it. He bore that heavy cross. And then there were the cruel spikes that were nailed to his feet and to his hands. And then the lifting of the cross with his, with his weakened, bloody body, sagging from its own weight, clinging there, waiting for As much as we want to, we must not have the heart for the people. This this is a very important part story of that last week of the flock. We could be called Holy Spirit. The Catholic, the Sunday, the Death, and all the rest. A few years later, Paul too was awaiting his death, sitting in a prison in Ephesus. He wrote his final letter. We know it as the letter to the Philippians. In this letter, Paul mentioned his greatest, one of his greatest concerns. And one of the things he was concerned about, he says, chapter 3, verse 18, For as I have often told you before, and now say again, even with many tears, many live as enemies of the 
That have been his mother Mary and his disciples and those who, who, who loved him and followed him, enemies of the cross, those who have heaven built this kind of vision. Would it have been all those who thought that this was an unfair way to treat those who had sent to death? Were they the enemies of the cross? Paul said the, the enemies of the cross of Christ are those whose end is destruction. Their destiny is destruction, he wrote. The God is their stomach, and their glory is their faith. Their mind is our earth and faith. The enemy is false. Those who just ignore it. Or pass on by it, or, or just so busy that they don't tend to think, or don't think, choose to think anything of it. Too busy with other things to, to give thanks and appreciate the greatest sacrifice that we have ever made. After a diving accident, Johnny Eric's Tata was a left at the far of preaching. Johnny was introduced to Christ as he became a Christian. But the whole Christian experience, and particularly the, the experience and, and appreciation of the cross, is something that would take time for her to develop and grow. At one point, that God is depressed again, fully paralyzed and dead, quadrupedal, not able to do virtually anything for herself. She reached the place of depression. She was depressed for, for some time, and she begged a friend who was there with her to give her some pills that she might end her life. Friend, frustration. Johnny said. Do anything about it. I can't even die. Filled with emotional pain, it's Billy. Johnny's best friend, Cindy, came to, to visit her a few days later. She sat at the bedside. She was struggling so hard to try to bring some kind of encouragement to Johnny and the, and the depression that she was undergoing. And suddenly she blurted out, Johnny, Jesus knows how you feel. Really, said Johnny. Yes, said Cindy. He knows how you feel. In fact, he was paralyzed too. You've got to be kidding. Uh, it's true, Johnny. Remember, he was nailed to the cross. His back was raw from beating, just like your back gets raw from time. The eyes of the bed for us. He must have longed to move, to change his position. To redistribute his weight somehow, but he couldn't. He was nailed to the cross. He couldn't move. He knows how to do it. Johnny had never thought of it that way before. She later, later said, In that moment, God became very real to me. In that moment, I realized that death was his plan to do. I realized that if he, if he could understand what it's like, be paralyzed in And if he could die on a cross for me, he really do it like He really do it Can you see it? Can you see the look of joy? The true look of life? Can you see the determination and perseverance? That's the way he looks at you. He looks at you with compassion. That's who he is. That's the way he longs to relate to you. But it's also the gift that he wants to do. Those are his gifts to you. And the gift that you and I have the opportunity to do it In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A closing song is... Thank you.
thank you for worshiping with us. Now we see God's blessing on you. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you this day. Oh,